Filmmakers use visual effects to create the illusion of achieving things that, to do for real, would either be too dangerous, too expensive, too complicated, or just plain impossible. Whether it's to give someone superpowers, make them fly through the air, or fall from a massive height, make them look like they're interacting with a computer-generated beast, or actually becoming one themselves. The hardest part for the VFX team is finding out the best method or investing in the right technique to obtain the best result possible. The hardest part for the actors is trying to remain in character and give a convincing performance whilst at the same time looking, well, like a bit of a twit. For Alice in Wonderland, the visual effects team made Matt Lucas perform as Tweedledee and Tweedledum dressed in a fat green costume on stilts. They made Johnny Depp talk to a green stick. Mia was a Kowska fight against, well, absolutely nothing. And Crispin Glover ride this odd looking contraption. Interesting enough, for this shot they only used Crispin's head. Everything else was CGI, which begs the question, why bother with the whole contraption in the first place? And is everything the VFX teams do really necessary? Or are they just having a bit of fun making the actors look stupid? As we saw in our previous video on Superman 1978, the special effects team went to tremendous lengths to convince us that Superman could fly, and the methods they used were rather clever and, to be honest, they also looked pretty cool. Nowadays, most of this is done digitally. The results are a lot more convincing and far easier to achieve, but the process just seems to be a lot more silly. I mean, did they really have to have men in green suits puppeteering his cape? And for this scene in Supergirl, did they really have to make Grant Gustin do this? In the finish scene, you can't even see his arm movements because they're covered with CG wind. And here, for The Hobbit, Benedict Cumberbatch drags himself around on the floor in a mocap suit and wearing a head-mounted camera. However, as we can see from this reel, none of his captured movement was actually used. And all of the facial expressions, movements and audio were taken from face and voice recordings that he did later on. These seemingly pointless exercises are now a common occurrence in almost every modern film. Jurassic World used stand-ins in grey suits to give the actors something to look at and respond to. But why did they have to wear these silly helmets? In The Revenant for the bear fight scene, they had an actor in a blue suit play the role of the bear to give Leo something to work with, but did he really have to wear the blue bear helmet? And in the beautiful 2017 movie, Oakcha, VFX artists had to create a digital super pig, realistic enough to convince the audience it actually existed and have it interact with the actors in such a way as to make us believe and empathise with its story. To accomplish this, they had to build props for the actors to interact with, but did they really have to be so varied and odd looking? There was a lightweight head that was worn by a puppeteer, a heavier padded head used for butting into things, an open mouth version for the teeth brushing shot, a large stuffy for body interactions, another body for her to roll on, a head that she could ride on, one for its butt, and this large padded suit for cuddling. But if we look at the finished shots, we see that the only things that they really needed are the points of contact between the actress and Ocha. All of this makes it seem like VFX teams are going to extraordinary lengths just to put actors in some rather silly positions for what appears to be no other reason than their own amusement. But unfortunately, the real reason for it isn't as fun and in fact is quite sad. VFX artists are under tremendous pressure from the producers and filmmakers to achieve the best effects they can, as quickly as they can, and of course, as cheaply as they can. And as they are always on a tight timeline and an ever so tight budget, reshoots are expensive and uh, complicated. But they have to be prepared for any possible changes or problems that may arise before they actually happen. In order to achieve this, reference material is key. They need lighting references, motion reference, texture reference, photos, models, scans, and basically anything they can get their hands on that they might need later on. 
For example, for Free Guy in post-production, the editor realised they needed Channing Tatum to give a critical piece of information that was key to the screenplay. But thanks to the fact the digital domain already had scans of the actor, B-rolls and unused footage, they were able to compile enough AI learning data for their proprietary tool Charlatan, together with an audio track that Tatum recorded of the missing line to be able to produce the shot they needed. And we didn't even notice. So even if it means taking thousands of photos, building models that won't be used, or even if it means making the actors look a bit silly, VFX artists will always use anything they can to leave us none the wiser.